Uh, Anthony Scott. Anthony, oh, there you are, Anthony. Anthony seemed to have some sort of a um, difficulty with gender assignation today. <laughs> Since he was fumbling with his badge outside, the trouble was it was Lady Susan Satchaman's badge. <laughs> so he can pay, and all his tables should pay as well. You need to support him. He clearly needs help. <laughs> Francis Weavers. Francis, I am told on reliably, following on last week's tale of somebody boiling an egg and nearly setting fire, I believe you've done the same this week. So we'll have a coin from you. Now, because uh, I was out in the countryside and marooned no power till last night, I didn't get any other gossip from members, and I apologise to those who tried. When your cell phone died and you have to go to your neighbour to get the generator to power it up again, uh, I must say that the weekend has left me with a dis uh, tremendous admiration for colonial women. <laughs> As I bucketed in <laughs> from the tanks outside water for personal hygiene, limited, um, cooking, cleaning and watering the dogs and the animals. Uh, quite, a, quite a stretch, I have to say. Now I thought we might just do a quick ombudsman quiz uh, for our sergeant session today, and I wondered if all of those who came to the vocational uh, evening at the Ombudsman's office can put a coin in now, because of course they will have an unfair advantage in this. First of all, in which country was the modern Ombudsman concept established? Finland, Denmark, or Sweden? Well done. Well, you can all pay, again, <laughs> just being pretty smart about that. What year, however, was that achieved? The modern, the, the original ombudsman was established in 1713, but the modern ombudsman was established when? 1950. All right, well you're well away from it, so you can all pay again. It was 1809 in Sweden, where we, we celebrated the 200th anniversary a couple of years ago. Yeah, what was the original meaning of the word ombudsman? My goodness. Well, you know, this, this is, I knew this would be a salutary lesson for me, that we're still flying too far under the radar. All right, well, it was complaints man, grievance person, parliament's man, or citizen's defender. So you can all pay again. Universal fine. Now this one ought to be a little bit easier. New Zealand was an early adopter of the ombudsman role. Anybody know how early? I mean, what number in line were we in terms of adopting this? Two. Two? No. Yes, sir? No. Twelve. Under six, folks. Four. All right. Well, those who said four don't pay, but the rest of you need to. We were the fourth country in the world to adopt the concept, but the first English-speaking country to do so. So what year was the Ombudsman Act passed? 1959 or 1962 or 1975? Anyone? How many are saying 62? Well, you're all right, and the rest of you can pay. Now, what was the original title of the office? Anybody know? That's, who was that? Ewan. And what did you say, Ewan? Parliamentary Complaints Commissioner. Well, you're nearly there. It was the Parliamentary Commission, uh, the Parliamentary Commissioner in brackets Ombudsman. But that title was abandoned when the Act was amended in 1975. So a coin from everybody else. Well done, Ewan. That was pretty close. Now, which um, famous, which uh, Minister of Justice famously said in a debate about the establishment of the role in New Zealand, there is nothing quite so impenetrable as a government department with something to hide and nothing quite so inscrutable as an experienced minister on the defence. Ralph Hannon. Ralph Hannon? No. Any other offers? If you think about the time, 1982, when this was introduced, Martin Finlay certainly took part in the debate, but he didn't say this. <laughs> well, he would have, Robert. <laughs> been around at the time, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, 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 the minister was John Marshall, Sir John, later Sir John Marshall. So, uh, coin in the plate. 
Well, who was the first New Zealand author? This is an easy one. Excellent. So, James, I'll pick you. So everybody at your table can pay for the privilege of having a scholar. And all the rest of you can pay for simply being ignorant. <laughs> now, um, when Sir Guy was sworn in, a, um, a well-known poet a writing in the Herald under the nom de plume Whim Wham, and I'll read a little bit of this poem, celebrated the arrival of the Ombudsman in this way. He said, have you seen the Ombudsman? The Ombudsman? The Ombudsman. Have you seen the Ombudsman who lives down Lampton Quay? Oh yes, I've seen the Ombudsman. Ombudsman? No. The Ombudsman. Yes, I've seen the Ombudsman. He hearkened to my plea. No Harry, Dick or Tombudsman. No cursory lick and a promise prombudsman. No full of importance and a pomp budsman. No dithering to and from budsman. No tiddly on pom pombudsman. He did his best for me. Then all let's see the ombudsman. The ombudsman. The ombudsman. It's all on the house. It's free. Let's bear our way, way, woes to the man who knows. Not wait on the mats of bureaucrats who live down Lampton Quay. There's much more, but I thought that was the most episode. <laughs> On Woodsman and other plays on the name. So who was the poet who wrote under the name of Wimwin? Well, that's pretty good. Thank you. Wonderful. I didn't think anybody might know that, but excellent. He, uh, he wrote uh, many, many years under that non in, in the Herald. Well, those who didn't. Those who didn't, who really didn't know that, just quietly put a point in. So how many ombudsmen have there been to date? Anybody has a guess? Four. Six. <laughs> but coming, you're getting up there. All right, there, there have been 14. So um, those who guessed will give you something in, and those who didn't, uh, let's uh... Now, of the three female ombudsmen, which one later became the first banking ombudsman? Liz Brown. Not Liz, no. She was the second appointment to that person. All right, a universal fine again, please. So that was Naja Tolomar. She only had one term as an ombudsman, and I think uh, there was some murk surrounding that, possibly a disagreement with the government of the day, but she was a doughty fighter uh, on behalf of, of the public. So, um, nearly last question. How many acts and conventions cover the work performed by the ombudsman? Four, five, six, or seven? Yeah, seven. Seven. Pretty good. Anybody name? A few of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you have to say, you have to know the Ombudsman Act. That's pretty. What's the most, what's the most often quoted act in the newspapers? The Official Information Act. Okay, the Protected Disclosure Act is the other one. Local Government and Official Information Act. And there are two United Nations conventions. One is that we are a national preventative mechanism, which obviously is a wonderful title, under the OPCAT Convention, which is the optional protocol to the Convention Against Torture, and we are a monitoring mechanism on the rights of people with disabilities. So again, a little honesty box, folks, those who didn't know the number or the, uh, or the range. And finally, well almost finally, what can an ombudsman do if he or she upholds a complaint or make an adverse finding after an investigation? of a systemic issue. Pray. Pray. Yes. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> the recipient department of the complaint often does that. <laughs> any, any ideas? Okay, well, it's often said that we're a toothless tiger, but I say some teeth, some tiger. We can make a recommendation. Under the Ombuds Official Information Act, there's a statutory duty to abide by that, unless there's, a, there's a, uh, an order in council made by the government to uh, not uphold that. Um, but in other ways, when I was a chief executive, when the ombudsman said do this, I just asked how high, you know, jump how high. Because not to do so means a very public naming and shaming in the parliament, because we can report to parliament on refusals to comply, and indeed what the original sin was. Uh, and we can make a formal report to parliament on a larger systemic issue. And I always thought as an ombudsman, or as a chief executive, um, that that was quite a um, career-limiting possibility of being named and shamed in public. And many chief executives have had that, uh, had that uh, as well. So finally, had that thought as well. So finally, 
I'd like everybody on their feet who has been a, or is, a Chief Executive Officer, a Senior Manager uh, in a government department or in the wider state sector in any Crown agency of any kind in local government, and anybody who consults to the state sector. All those people on their feet. <laughs> Another good reason why this club is preeminently important to the town. <laughs> All right, you can pay because as an ombudsman I can't find you, but as the sergeant I can. Thank you. <laughs>